Empowered Nurses. It's Lori Brown from EmpoweredNurses.org and YourNurseAttorney.com. And I am so grateful today for my special guest, Doris Carroll. And Doris is um, a registered nurse with the uh, with um, University of Illinois Chicago Hospitals. Uh, she works in the infectious disease clinic and they do some primary care as well. Um, but what's really interesting about Doris is she's the president of the Illinois Nurses Association, a chief union steward, vice president of the Illinois AFL-CIO, and founder of Nurses Take DC. And she is such a huge advocate for mandatory minimum staffing for all nurses. So um, I brought Doris here because a couple weeks ago I wrote about a strike that University of Illinois Chicago is having. And um, I wanted to bring to you Doris to talk firsthand about what happened. So welcome, Doris. Thank you so much for having me, Lori. I really appreciate it. And yes, we, um, after um, about 25 bargaining sessions, we started in mid-June and we uh, bargaining uh, sessions actually stalled, negotiations stalled. And we, the Illinois Nurses Association has been at our hospital for 46 years. And we uh, gave an intent to strike on September 2nd and you have to give a 10 day notice. And so we went out for seven days and from uh, September 12th through the, uh, up to the 19th. And we had, um, it was a very empowering experience for our nurses because of the fears and anger through the pandemic that we experienced as nurses. Um, we had our nursing leadership really broke, really broke down uh, with communications with us and um, nurses felt alone. Two of our nurses died. Over 200 became infected and it was uh you you know due to lack of ppe and our hospital was the first in the country to uh, uh mandate universal masking one week before the cdc and the world health organization uh mandated it we did that because of the union and that's why i'm here today to empower nurses to get their voice because if and, and we understand it's scary, uh, your fear of loss of your uh, job, but when you have a union in place, administration listens. Mm -hmm. And um, we also were the first in the country to get COVID hazard pay for our nurses. Oh, wow. Right, and so even I got hazard pay, $5 more an hour for working in a clinic the nurses in the ED and the ICUs got $15 more an hour because nurses were afraid to come to work in the early days of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, our strike, the reason why we went on strike was because of we wanted to have safe patient limits or um, maximum number of patients assigned to a nurse in the hospital. And the nursing leadership and negotiation team for the hospital, it was almost as if they, uh, to them, ratios is a dirty word. And they would not even discuss it with us, not even discuss. And therefore, we, we knew we needed to do something. And myself and my co-chief steward, Paul Pater, we have some good political connections across the state and with other union leaders. So we did several job actions to uh, put the pressure on legislators and union leaders to reach out to our governor and his office because our governor sits on the board of trustees for University of Illinois as a de facto member. So we had that pressure going. Um, and what culminated, we also, a, a large union, SEIU, on our campus with 4,000 members also went on strike. Wow. So 
I think that combination really, uh, by day three of the strike, we were asked to come back to negotiations. Hmm. And um, can we break so, this down from the beginning though? Sure. So the reason why you went on strike was not because of more money, right? That was part of it, but the, but the major reason was staffing. You ask any nurse, what is the major first problem in their work life? And that is staffing. So that was number one. And, and you wanted PPE, right? And number two was to put disaster language in our contract, uh, which was a 90 day rolling supply of PPE, uh, a, a commitment from the university to have negative air pressure rooms and a commitment to look at not just N95, but the new technology that's coming out for other respirators for nurses. Hmm. And we got that language in. Great. We got that language in, yes. So um, I'm sure you didn't take a strike lightly. I read that you haven't struck, uh, had a strike for 40 years. Right. Actually, we never went on strike. It was mm -hmm. another um, union on campus that did. So the INA has never gone on strike at the University of Illinois. It was our first strike. And nurses were, I, I'm telling you, they were, uh, it wasn't so much excitement. It did become a um, more of a, like I said, an empowering event because they knew what our services, our labor force would do to this institution. We also happened to coordinate it on the same day that Epic was rolling out. So <laughs> I think we sent a message. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. say. And, and that's, you know, if nurses don't speak up and stand up for what they want, you know, the, and this is one way to affect change. There's others, of course, um, but unfortunately other ways didn't work in, in your case. Um, but let's talk about the, uh, it's my understanding that a judge limited the number of nurses that could strike? Right. So because we're attached to the University of Illinois, our union um, is not under the jurisdiction of the National Labor Review Board. It's under the Illinois Education Labor Relations Review Board. And that allows the hospital to file an injunction to injunct certain units to force nurses to cross the picket line of their colleagues and yeah. work. And they do that, they've done it every contract year for the last three years in a row. This happened to be the year that we actually went out on strike. So all the ICUs, the emergency room, um, the um, some other clinics, which was kind of kind of crazy, our, uh, our oncology clinic, I guess, you know, we do chemo there. And uh, it ended up being a total of 500 nurses, but usually only about 120 nurses uh, per shift. And we did a lot of job actions related to that. We had the big buttons that said INA with nurses uh, handcuffed and forced to work. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, it was very disheartening for those nurses, but mm -hmm. they knew that if they didn't obey the law, they could be charged, obviously, so. So who else was running the hospital or, you know, working? So my, my uh, theory, and I, I don't think it's groundless, we did have agency nurses and we had so many of them this year that, they came in from many states. We are not a compact state. So nurses have to wait two to three months to get a license in Illinois. We know they came in under the executive order of Governor Pritzker, which allowed a temporary permit for COVID. But that executive order required those nurses to work with COVID patients. At that point in time, we had five COVID patients throughout the hospital and, all, and none in the ICU setting. So, and several nurses came in without being uh, tested for COVID and so two of them we found out ended up being positive for COVID. And lastly, what I feel is the Illinois Hospital Association somehow provided some of the funding to hire these nurses because 
their fear of us being the first hospital in Illinois to have safe patient limits. And what we got instead, we, we feel the pressure was on and not until our CEO became involved in negotiations and nursing leaders bowed out temporarily, did we get administration to listen. So we did get, they're not calling it safe patient limits, but, and they're really angry that we're kind of using the word ratios. What we got in the contract was safe staffing FTE commitment, AKA, or de facto ratios and acuity. Of course, we still have an acuity tool. So we feel that we will keep them accountable for, and they hire, so they agreed to hire originally 200 extra nurses, but we found out that they were not uh, budgeting according to their budgeted FTEs. Many units were below budget, so they agreed to hire those nurses to get to budgeted FTEs plus additional 160 nurses. So we meet monthly with our staffing committee and we will uh, ensure that they are accountable uh, for getting these 160 nurses in. And we looked at the average daily census, the number of beds and the FTEs, and those numbers will come up to a safe patient limit in our hospital. And that's the bottom line. I see. Oh, interesting. So yes. what advice would you have for nurses who are thinking about um, crossing a picket line or nurses going on strike? So nurses who cross a picket line, I feel very strongly are um, hurting the nurses that work at that institution. Many nurses that have crossed the picket line that I talk to on social media tell me that they are helping us that they could, that we could not strike unless they came in to take care of our patients. But in fact, that's not true. That's a uh, management Kool-Aid rhetoric. In fact, I have that right to strike because of the federal and state laws in place. So when they cross a picket line, they are aligned with management and not um, listening to our, their sisters and brothers who are fighting for safe patient limits. They're working against us at that point in time. And so my message to those nurses who want to have a voice and have the same um, opportunity to have safe patient limits in their hospital, I do know that it is very difficult without some kind of protection in place so that you would not lose your job. But we do hear of wildcat strikes not in the hospital setting, but in the teacher setting, where teachers in Kentucky, West Virginia, and even California, without a union, walked off their jobs <laughs> en masse throughout the state, and they were able to get what they needed, um, and that was insurance and wage increases. In a hospital setting, many nurses over the years are trained to care for our patients and management plays on our empathy, our caring demeanor that we would abandon our patients. You are not abandoning your patients when you walk out on strike because it's not our responsibility to staff a hospital. It is the hospital's responsibility to staff. So what I would recommend, the simple way to do it really is to join a union to call a union in your state. It doesn't have to be a nurse's union, although I am biased for having some a nurses join a nurse's union, but that's how the protections you will get on saving your job by speaking out. Speak out to your legislators for when there's hearings about issues that impact nursing. And that's what I do frequently. Uh, we we uh, testify uh, at hearings and so, please do that. Talk to your legislators, tell them a story of how unsafe it is. And when legislators hear unsafe staffing, they really don't know what that means. And luckily in Illinois, uh, the representative Fred Crespo, uh, the chief sponsor for the House bill, he's married to a nurse. So his wife certainly fills him in on a daily basis what it's like. 
So, but then we have the Senator, uh, Christina Castro, and she's had uh, health issues over the years. And so she understands everybody's had health issues. Everybody has a relative who's had health issues. So all you have to do is tell the legislators how unsafe staffing impacts on their family member and give them a story of how miscare relates to um, uh, uh, poor patient outcomes and you know more infections, more falls, more risk of uh, heart attack and death in a hospital. And I'm telling you, the sound bite that went around the world when we were on strike was when I correlated daycare providers have ratios and so do dog kennels. Why hospitals cannot have ratios to protect our patients and nurses is unbelievably, uh, uh, why, why can't we have that? And so that really made, uh, I think, a difference, but it was not a sound bite I really wanted people to hear, but that's what got, you know, all over international media even. So that's okay. <laughs> yeah. If I get to that level, then that I think is understandable to almost everybody. Yeah, in fact, I pulled that from my, in my article as well. Yes. yes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Nurses Take DC. Um, can you tell us about what it is and how nurses can get involved if they are interested? Sure, Nurses Take DC is a grassroots uh, nationwide movement to support federal legislation for safe patient limits. And for the last 10 years, a federal bill is reintroduced every two years uh, through, uh, and also Senate bills. The latest one is through uh, Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, who's actually from Illinois. And what nurses need to understand is, uh, yes, we should get this bill, bills passed at the state level, but if you get it passed at the federal level, then it mandates states to, uh, in fact, uh, enact this kind of legislation. So we have a website, www.nursestakedc.com. It's not currently active because we had to cancel our conference this year, conference and lobby day due to the pandemic, but we do intend to uh, do another conference uh, in 2022 and usually around in April, late April or early May. And what we need you to do is to um, start reading up on all the literature, two decades of literature about uh, safe patient limits. That is on our website, so you can get familiarized with that. And what we had planned was a lobby day, and we were going to make appointments with all of your legislators that were registered. It only cost $20 to participate, but of course then come out to DC. $20 with CEs, that's a fantastic bargain for nurses. And you're doing something about your profession. You're actively taking part in trying to pass legislation. So that's what I would recommend. Get you get uh, know what the um, what the research says, and then get involved. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I always say that you can't pay enough pay enough money to people to do the things that nurses do. We are exposed to everything under the sun, but we don't do it because um, you, for the money, we do it because we care. And if it can make our job a little bit um, easier and improve patient care, you know, I, I, it, I, we should all be for it. So I, and I heard one of our nurse leaders in negotiations said to us, Doris, you signed up for this as a nurse, uh, the being at risk for uh, getting COVID. And no, we didn't sign up to be uh, put at risk and bring the uh, COVID to our families. We signed up to take care of patients. It's the hospital's responsibility to provide a safe workplace. And you did not provide that for us. So exactly, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, well, I think you received a phenomenal result. You did a great job for um, all of your nurses um, at University of Illinois Chicago. Um, and um, we're grateful to nurse leaders like you to pave the way um, to advocate for nurses because unless nurses stand together and speak up, we are going to continue to be um, the, I, I always say nurses, nursing is um, 
uh, the call center, the largest part of the hospital's budget and the easiest to cut. And instead, I'd love to see nurses be a revenue producing center. But let's, but at least now, let's just make sure that nurses have the resources and supplies and uh, ability to at least do their job. Exactly. And if anyone wants to reach out to me and try to, you know, in Illinois um, or across the country uh, to get more information, they can reach me at dcarol at illinoisnurses.com. And Carol is with two R's and two L's. So I'd be more than willing to talk to people to help them. And, and you also have an, a website, the Illinois Nurses Association. Right. Website. Yeah. That's, uh, yes, illinoisnurses.com. Perfect. Okay. Well, um, Doris, thank you so much for being here and thank you for, for taking the initiative and caring so much about nurses um, to, um, you know, literally stick your neck on the line and, um, but to be the voice of change. Thank you. Absolutely. I've been a nurse for 37 years. I want to give back to our profession. We need to be unified. We need to be empowered. And that's what my message is. Do it. Do something. <laughs> Get involved. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.